Shauna J.C. Tenney has been in love with art since she can remember and she's always wanted to be a mom. She found a way to combine the two by making some major sacrifices. Today, Shauna is an accomplished children's book author and illustrator with a rich story that's bound to inspire you. You can find more of her artwork on her Instagram at Shauna J.C. Tenney. But today, join us as we talk about how art helps with ADHD, building an art career while being a full-time mom, why art and stories are essential to human development, benefits of changing art styles, how traditional art can help you go into digital art, and how to recover from acrylic painting disasters. Want to be part of the show? Then send in your questions or topics you'd like to see covered to our email at hello at etcherlab.com. If you send us an audio recording, we might include it in the episode. Hi, I'm Anya, and this is Make More Art, a podcast by Etcher, meant to inspire you to keep on creating. Now let's hear from our guest. First question I have for you, my dear, is when was the first time, I never asked you this, I've known you forever, but I've never asked you this, when was the first time that you realized art was essential to you and it was something that you had to do for a living? Uh, for a living? Well, I knew that art was essential to me since I was really little. Um, it, it was kind of my therapy. Mm. Like, I would... Um, I would go into my room and I would, this is, this is totally nerdy, but I would blast like soundtracks of John Williams. Oh my. <laughs> and I would, I would just draw and it was just kind of like my little sanctuary where I could, you know, imagine and um, just dream, you know, it was just part of my who, what I needed to do to decompress, I guess. But um, as a career, um, it didn't come till, well, I think like when I was like in first grade, I said, like I had been told so much, like since I drew so much, I had been kind of praised a lot for it. So I told my first grade teacher, I'm an artist. And which oh. was really awesome because she, like I struggled in other subjects. Um, I, I had, I have what I now know was undiagnosed ADHD. Um, but so I, I struggled, you know, um, in a lot of subjects, but she let me do things like she let me um, make a big nativity scene for the Christmas program. She, um, we did a puppet show and I got to do art for that. And so she really encouraged me. Um, I love teachers that do that. Um, wow. As a career, <laughs> sorry, I keep going back. No, no, but, great. Uh, I kind of got sidetracked and wanted to go into ballet for a long time. That kind of became my love. I think, I think the whole storytelling thing was, has always been big to me. Mm -hmm. um, even though I didn't know it, you know, cause in ballet you, you tell stories and um, I was really into like the, the fantasy and the princesses and that, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I grew up loving ballet, but I kind of realized that wasn't a good career, cho career choice for me mm -hmm. kind of around my, my junior or senior year. Um, and I decided to go into art because I also wanted to be a mom and I thought it would be like awesome that I could be able to, stay at home and do art and be a mom. Um, so I guess that's kind of how I decided to become an artist, but it's always been important to me for sure. I, okay. There are so many things I love about that story. One it's the first time I ever heard anyone tell me, I always knew I wanted to be a mom and you're a mom of two teenagers now. Uh, yeah. And, I find your your story very very sweet, 
and then you were like okay so ballet is really not for me it's I mean I'm assuming it's because it's not only the physical stuff but it's something that you're so many hours go into it outside of the house and you go I don't know if they go on tour I'm assuming so because the the ballet company travels so it's a very on the move kind of job and then you were like oh but I also love art and I can be home and be a mom at the same time and one does not take away from the other so I can have those two coexisting together and that's exactly what you're doing so today you're doing children's books and you're at home being a mom so what you truly wanted came to be was it as easy yeah. as it seems now that I'm saying out loud <laughs> definitely not um yeah well when so I I was oh gosh I had my first kid really young I was like 23 I was just out of college wow and um I my husband had to go finish his degree. So I went back and got a job like at a, a retail store doing in a frame shop, framing art, which I actually did a lot of during college. Mm -hmm. um, and so I did that while I had a baby at home. We kind of traded off when we were home and that was really hard. And I was like, Whoa. okay, I have a degree in illustration and I want to be home with my with my baby, you know? Oh my God. So yeah, it was, it was hard. So that's where I really pushed myself and I found, um, I started sending my stuff out and that's how I kind of found my first agent and started getting my first, um, kind of educational small jobs. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it was really, really hard. Um, we were pretty poor, um, so I couldn't like afford daycare or anything. And it was, and it was like, I was, I had a really, like my first job was like really, really crazy. And I basically had to have my mom help me watch my daughter a lot because it was like, I was staying up all night and illustrating and trying to keep, take care of the baby. It was just, it How was, old it was, was the baby. Um, by, by then she was a year. Still, mine's yeah, almost was... a year, and I'm imagining staying up all night. To work. Oh, my God. <laughs> How did you do it? You're my hero. Oh, my God. It was crazy, and I definitely would not repeat it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I did learn a lot, though, for sure, in all areas of my life, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I, I can only imagine. Cause, so by that time, did you study art? up until then or how did that came to be yeah um I got my um BFA in illustration I I graduated a couple months before the baby was born and so it was um like a year after that that I actually really started getting into illustration okay so yeah mm -hmm. wow and you mentioned ADHD that you got diagnosed you know quite recently more or less comparing to you know, you were struggling when you were a kid. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think it's still a theme that, I mean, I was talking to a friend of mine who's also an artist and she recently got diagnosed with ADHD as well. And everything started making sense because what we think ADHD is and what it actually is are two disparate things. So how did you get your diagnosis? What were the symptoms and how does that affect your work? Um, I've, I've actually never been diagnosed, but, um, I have gone to classes for it and my daughter has been diagnosed w with it. Oh. Um, so that's how I know a lot about it. And that's how I kind of know that I have it. Mm -hmm. And, um, also when I was little, my, my brother had it, um, like, like really, really a really hard case of it. Um, and I think because of that, my mom didn't want to get me diagnosed. Mm. I don't know if that makes sense. It does. It does. He, he was just on medication and stuff. And I guess because I was uh, more mild and it was also like the 
80s so <laughs> yeah a lot of things um, yeah a lot of things but um i think the the thing with adhd that helps with art is, is that um it helps with my creativity mm-hmm. um but it also like like the reason we think that it's like you can't pay attention is because you're thinking of so many things. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're like having so many ideas. Um, I've learned to, um, you know, do things that help me. Like um, I have a bullet journal that helps mm-hmm. me write things down and um, I keep track of things on a calendar. Um, sometimes it's hard for me to do like to go back and forth from my art to things I need to do with my kids back and forth. So that makes it kind of difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I, like I said, I've learned a lot of techniques to help myself. And mm-hmm. um, I'm also grateful. Like there's like the um, thing. Sometimes you can like hyper focus on something, mm-hmm. which really helps with when, when I'm doing a project and stuff. Um, but other times it's like, oh, like I start doing something. Oh, I need to do this. Oh, I need to do that. You know, so and nothing gets done um, because you do a little bit of everything instead of a lot of one thing and just going from A to B or to C consumes so much energy to change gears that you end up exhausted without, you know, any mental capability of doing anything else. I'm guessing from right, what I exactly. read. Okay. So yeah interesting to me is how art helped you through a mild uh, ADHD case so what what was it about art that helped you stay focused on something or I guess with art since you know it, it, you do projects I'm able to um, focus on one project at a time really well mm-hmm you were speaking about your room being kind of your sanctuary where you put the music and then you would focus on art making. So right. how did that even become a thing? How, how, how did you make the connection that this is what you needed to either unwind or focus or it, it you called it sanctuary. So I'm trying to understand why. Yeah. I don't know if I ever like, mentally you know put that into a box like mm-hmm. that um it's just kind of looking back i realize that mm-hmm. i think it also had to do with um i mean i i i'm more extroverted now but it was like an introvert thing like decompressing mm-hmm. um so yeah i guess and like like I could hyper focus on on that thing and just decompress. So creating art helped you process everything that was going on, I guess, because you were able to focus on something and just let it out. Right. And the the great thing about art is, is that you're you're using a different part of your brain than like you can like think about things and you can listen to different things. Mm-hmm. while you draw mm-hmm. so it is a great way to just process life when you're you know really into it awesome yeah I love it I love it how you, that's beautiful how you just put it and maybe that's uh, now this is me like uh carrying the words around but that's maybe why heart art is such a popular hobby because it helps anyone no matter their skill level to just focus on something else and just let things go it's a form of meditation sort of exactly yeah so fast forward to today you are a super successful children's book uh author i mean you have both stories that you wrote and illustrated like uh, bernilda's backwards day i do have that book in my shelf i'm still like dreaming about the day that i get to see you in person and get that little that beauty signed but so yeah you wrote (laughs) and illustrated your own stories and you also uh, illustrate someone else's stories um and everything you do 
you love making art and stories for kids. You have your audience very well defined and that's your thing. Uh, why kids? I don't know. I guess um, there's just part of me that never grew up and I just, I just love those children's stories. Mm -hmm. They make me happy, you know, like I, I still feel like I'm, I, I actually feel like when I write and illustrate, I'm actually writing and illustrating for adults too, because mm -hmm. it appeals to me. Like, um, and then when I get to connect with kids and like share my stories, just seeing their, their joy and their, you know, getting into the story is, is just really fun. Yeah. Wow. What do you think is the more philosophical question? What do you think is the role of art in children's development or education? Um, definitely um, art and stories can help them through like things they're going through, mm -hmm. um, help them process things. Um, like I like to, I like to, um, in the stories that I write and illustrate, I like to use empathy in that way um, mm -hmm. for kids. Like um, maybe things that I went through when I was a kid mm -hmm. um, and I can, you, it's even helping me process things that I went through as, as a kid mm -hmm. and it can help kids process their stories too, um, which I love. And they, I mean, there's, so, I love the range of, children's books and stories um there's like the very sweet beautiful stories and then there's like the hilarious stories and i love i just love the whole range of them wow wow before we delve a little bit further more into art making and your art choices uh one more thing about your career path so far so we stopped at the time that you were working nights to get your stories and your art done and you found an agent fast forward until today can you just help us close that bridge yeah i i found my first agent um she was an art rep and i worked with her for about eight years doing a lot of um, smaller publishers educational work that kind of stuff um i got a second I, I left her, which was actually very hard um, to, to leave an agent, um, make that leap. But um, I just wasn't getting the kind of stories I wanted to do because I wanted to do my own stories. Mm -hmm. And um, a few months after that, I got my agent that helped me get my Brunhilde contract. Um, and then uh, kept working. Uh, podcasted a little bit mm -hmm. you work <laughs> and together there. uh yeah work together um and uh I kind of had like a I've had a couple times where I've um decided to change my style up a bit mm -hmm. um maybe to help it either fit more into the industry or um just I was kind of tired of the way I was doing things. Um, and, you know, I've learned a lot along the way. And I think that's helped kind of progress my um, career. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I left my second agent. I kind of had a, a dry spell for a while. I was doing bits of um, freelance here and there, but um, was working on my own stories a lot. And then I found my current agent, mm -hmm. Lori Kilkelly, and I just love her. She's amazing. Um, and she, she's helped me get um, a contract on a book that I'm working on now. And it's with Macmillan, a big publisher. And we're working on another project, which I can't talk about yet, but awesome. Um, it's one of my stories. So I'm really excited. Um, so yeah so wow. um it's been a big learning process my whole career and a lot of changing things up mm -hmm. so can you talk a little yeah. bit more about 
uh, you changing styles that really piqued my interest. So you change your style because A, you were a little bit tired of doing the quote unquote same thing and B, to fit the industry better. So there's a lot of misconceptions about styles, a lot of myths. Some people say, you know, you, you find your style and then that's it. But what you're saying goes against all of those myths floating around there. So can you please expand a little bit more about that? Right. I had a lot of, um, when I got out of school, I thought I had had found my style and it was like the way I thought of style was like, I have to always draw the children's faces sort of the same. And I have to like draw the, the bushes or the, the plants the same. Mm -hmm. They have to, so I thought they had to like fit into like kind of a, you have like a book, like this is how, how I draw trees. This is how, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and I was painting in acrylic back then. Mm -hmm. um, I started my career in acrylic. Um, and then I got, I got into doing digital. Um, when I was, when I had little kids at home, I had a lot of messes. I don't know if you've had this yet, but um, I, would, I would be painting acrylics for a client. I would go mm -hmm. to the bathroom for a minute. The, the kid would come up and paint all over my acrylic painting. Oh my god! <laughs> all over the stuff, all over the carpet. Um, that happened a few times. And <laughs> luckily, um, with acrylic, you can like, if you, if it's still wet, you can get water on it, scrub it out, you know. So I was able to do some of that, but I had to do a lot of painting over, and it was frustrating. Um, so I, I had, I actually learned from some friends how to do digital. Mm -hmm. I just, I just had, you, you actually interviewed Manel and yeah. she does watercolors now, but she's the first one who taught me, Manel Oliphant what? was the first one who taught me how to do, um, digital painting. Is that crazy or what? Small world. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Um, but kind of the, I think learning from different artists over the years, mm -hmm. I realized that um, style is, you know, you, you just kind of, when you draw yourself, you, it just kind of becomes your style because that's how you draw. You don't have to have like the set. This is how I draw this. And this is how I draw that. Um, and, uh, I think my style also changed from, um, I just you know, when, when I decided to, Kind of break out of the mold of the educational small, small publisher things. Mm -hmm. um, I decided to take classes, um, different on, online classes, and I think that kind of um, started to change my style a bit too. Mm -hmm. um, but then um, I also felt like there was like a definite style that picture books were kind of going into. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to change my style a little bit. Um, I was using like a lot of outlines and a lot of shading. So I decided to make my style a little more, more flat and lose the outlines, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's kind of how it evolved. Yeah. So you were paying attention to what was going on in the industry and what was getting out to mm -hmm. then raise your chances of uh, being picked, I guess. Being picked, I don't like that sentence, but... <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah and I, I'm trying to keep changing it up like I don't want to keep using the same like the same brush digital brushes or like I've been finding uh different ones I want to you know I I want it to keep evolving I guess mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to like make it you know get stuck in one place for sure yeah yeah always um uh... Upwards and onwards. Okay, yeah. awesome. Art stuff. Now let's talk about the artsy art things. So you do a lot of digital, I know. Uh, is that your favorite art medium or do you have any other? Um, currently it is my favorite medium. It's just kind of convenient. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I, I do have like... Um, 
I, I need to get back into my sketchbooks more, but I do enjoy, um, doing like, um, like a field watercolor, mm -hmm. um, type thing. I actually have the, um, the etcher, the art satchel. Um, I've enjoyed doing some, uh, sketchbook watercolor stuff out, Aww. out in nature. Yeah. And I, I love digital gouache brushes. I would, I think I want to learn more about gouache, you know, cause I did a lot of acrylic and it's, it's kind of like there's acrylic and there's watercolor and I think gouache is kind of in between. Mm -hmm. So I, I would like to learn more about that. Oh, so I know a good again, place for to you to learn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gosh, uh, we have so many gouache uh, content and we're launching uh, news on gouache stuff soon. But anyway, that aside, so since you already work with watercolors and acrylic and you like digital, um, would you care to share some tips? I mean, if, if you look back and look at a big struggle that you had and how you have to overcome it, can you share some art tips on whatever medium comes to mind? Well, I think... Um... A great thing that I've learned um, that is important that I think all all artists should do um, is learning the traditional mediums before learning digital oh. um, because um, it helped me um, a learn how um, how to mix colors well mm -hmm. um, and um, I actually use, like, if you think about um, how colors are mixed, like if you mix complementary colors, um, if you mix them perfectly together, they become a gray. And I learned, um, you know, when you're using digital um, colors and you're going towards more towards gray, you're actually going more towards the complementary color. So I think that really helped me in my brain connect the two. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the second thing that is helpful for learning traditional mediums before digital is you understand um, how they look when you're um, painting um, traditionally. Mm -hmm. So um, I like... I, I like digital paintings that look more natural mm -hmm. and look like there's like a tooth to the, to the paper. Um, you can, there's like the dry brushing technique that you can do in acrylics and it makes it, uh, you can like see the color underneath type thing. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really um, valuable to learn these traditional before digital because you, when you get into digital, there's a lot of digital paintings that look just really plastic. I think, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I guess, I guess that's not my preferred style, especially if, like me, I'm doing um, children's illustration, and I think that um, they're more drawn towards the more natural-looking mediums. So, yeah, wow, makes a lot of sense. You have a live demo with us planned for June 14th. At the time of this recording is June 14th. If that changes, the new date will be written down on the post associated with this episode at etcherlab.com forward slash Tenny. And can you tell us what you will be doing on that day? Yeah, um, I actually, I kind of talked about it. I, I, I'm going to I'm going to kind of tie in um, what I've learned with traditional paint and showing um, how you can do more traditional looking digital paint. Um, I think we're probably going to be doing an animal illustration um, for that demo with maybe some um, foliage, some background stuff. So it'll be fun to kind of show how you can use like really grumbly types of digital brushes to make it look really traditional. Awesome. And what software will you be using? I will be using Photoshop. 
my favorite. Oh, this will be fun. Thank you so much, Shauna. Before we wrap up, any words, any advice, anything you'd like to leave our listeners? Um, have fun making art and definitely use it for your therapy. And <laughs> um, I, I've really, really enjoyed seeing all the things that Etcher's been putting out, um, all the fun mediums. So have fun with any medium that you're using and um, make more art because that's what the world needs. Do you remember what drove you into art making? Please let us know your story in the comment section of the post associated with this episode at etcherlab.com forward slash tenny. That's E-T-C-H-R-L-A-B dot com forward slash T-E-N-N-E-Y. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, simply let us know in the comment section below. If you're enjoying the podcast, please help us keep the show alive. You can subscribe and give us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts at etcherlab.com forward slash go forward slash Apple. Or if you're more of a YouTube viewer, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our most recent videos. Sharing is caring and every little bit helps. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Until then... Let's make more art.